Good evening, everyone. This is SoCali Wrestling. Today we have Hector Canales. How you doing? Zachary, what brought you to the wrestling ring? What brought me to the wrestling ring was, um, honestly, it was, uh, I was going to get married. And I had a lot of money saved up for a Mustang. And I, thought, and I was getting a Mustang to get chicks, but I was already engaged. So my best friend was looking into wrestling and I've always wanted to wrestle, but I never thought I could because uh, playing basketball, high school basketball, I ended up injuring my back. I got two ruptured discs in my lower back, another one in, my, in uh, between my shoulder blades. So I thought, nah, I'm not really gonna do anything, but I always just, I've always loved wrestling ever since uh, I was a kid flipping through Pee Wee Herman, trying to find Pee Wee Herman. And instead of finding uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse, I ended up finding wrestling, uh, Big Boss Man beating up on some jobber and ravishing Rick Rude hitting up on Jake the Snake's wife. So that goes back, I was um, six years old or something. And my neighbor was actually a policeman. So I, after that, I was really scared of the guy. And that's how I got into it, getting in the ring. So who is the wrestler that influenced you the most? If it's independent or the, the pro wrestling, I gotta say it's not just one. Um, honestly, I started off. My biggest influences were the ones, the guys I loved as a kid it's in the '80s, and that's actually how I try to modify my, my wrestling style '80s wise. I, that's what I fell in love with the '80s wrestling with um, Hulk Hogan. Macho Man, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. I mean, now I could look back and think, okay, out of those three, one was really good. But uh, as a kid, you know, I didn't, I didn't care that Brutus didn't know how to wrestle because I didn't look at that. Um, I was in a smork. I just loved the entertainment value of it. And Brutus the Barber Beefcake to me was a damn good entertainer. Now, what I see is guys that work with them, like Macho Man, Ravishing Rick Rude, Mr. Perfect, who ended up making the guy look good. And that's what I, as a heel, I try to bring that out from my, my opponent. Your, your style reminds me a little bit of A. Guerrero. You, it's the yeah. entertainment part. You get the people's attention, you never get them bored. If it's being acting like Michael Jackson, or acting as, wow. Well, Homosexual at the time. <laughs> but Look, uh, I honestly I get that a lot. That some people want to say I'm trying to imitate Eddie Guerrero. Um, I've gone so far as to try to separate myself from that. I went from wearing long tights to wearing little underwears. I went from um, having a mustache and a goatee to shaving it off. Uh, to cutting my hair, just honestly, to getting away from that, from the whole stigma of you're trying to be Eddie Guerrero, brother. I'm Latino, you know. I'm not Mexican. I'm Salvadorian, but to a lot of people, that doesn't make a difference. Like you're just a Mexican, and I gotta understand that. I was in a, um, I had a WWE trial, and I'm back there with a lot of the uh, lucha boys. And we're all getting dressed, and this guy comes up, an employee of the place, and says, where are the Mexican boys at? I'm trying to get a job. Pure Salvadorian blood? Whatever, I'm a Mexican boy. I'm going out there, because you're trying to get a job. People don't, don't you know, if you, if you don't live in the culture, if you're not really in the culture, it all seems the same to you. Like, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, to you, to anybody, they all eat Chinese food, right? I'm not trying to be a Donald Sterling here, but that's kind of the stigma, at least for the Latino people, for the Hispanics, that's at least for us like El Chinito, ese Chinito, that Chinito, even though they're Korean or even Filipino. So um, I'm not trying to be Eddie Guerrero. To, do I look up to Eddie? Oh man, I look up to Eddie. Do you do? Are you also with Eddie Guerrero? Do you do with Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko, Perry Saturn? All, honestly, out of all those guys, the guy I look up to, uh, Dean Malenko, badass wrestler. But there's something about his charisma that's lacking. I don't like looking at him. It's like, okay, Chris Benoit. 
Oh man, probably the best wrestler out of out of the three that you just named. But eh, Eddie Guerrero, I'd sit there and laugh at the things he does, or be like huh, biting my nails as he's doing whatever he's doing. It gets to me that blend of entertainment with badass wrestling is beautiful, and that's what I love. That's to me, to me, that's '80s wrestling. That blend of wrestling with charisma, the Rockers versus the Heart Foundation. Oh man, the Heart Foundation versus Demolition. Oh man, because they brought it in their own way. Bret Hart didn't have the biggest charisma, but alongside Chip Neidhart, it complemented. So this charisma just played off with the Demolition and their whole thing. It just it played off, and it was good. Ultimate Warrior. We all know he wasn't the best, the best wrestler, but he had entertainment value. And if you work with uh, the Million Dollar Man, you knew it was gonna be an okay show, and you knew you were gonna get entertained. Now, of course, it, uh, you go back to WrestleMania Four, and it's the Ultimate Warrior versus um, some. I forgot the guy, uh, Colonel. Probably, I forgot who the guy is, but it was the most horrible match ever that the whole tassels and the didn't matter because it was a piece of crap you know like you put it two guys in there one guy that could work one guy that could entertain and he got a badass match look at brock lesnar versus eddie guerrero when eddie wins the title that was an incredible match because both of them complimented brock lesnar doesn't have this big ass uh, um charisma he's just a massive human being but Eddie Guerrero brings it. He brings the charisma, he brings the storytelling. It was just beautiful. That, that match I could watch over and over and over again. You know? Well, back to you're actually a true fan. There's other wrestlers also been true fans like you, like uh, Greek God, Papa Don. He said the same thing at you. He started not with the attitude, but he started with the retro era, as I call it, where there was the Hogan, the Macho Man. Re the retro entertainment. I mean, a lot of people rag on, oh, the NWA had better wrestlers. Uh, WCCW had better wrestlers. Yeah, but that doesn't sell tickets. It doesn't sell merchandise. It, it sells to the people, to the hardcore wrestling fan to go and watch the, 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 the show. But it doesn't sell to the mom and pop who got three little ones. Those are the ones that are coming. You're gonna get the college kids to come in 